two teams more than ready to get this one started. And this one is underway here on EA Sports. Take it in at the three. Pittsburgh's offense making its way out, and we get a look at the player drafted to succeed Ben Roethlisberger as the franchise's quarterback. Knows a lot about the city. He's a rookie out of Pitt, Kenny Pickett. Here's the leading rusher amongst rookies last season, Najee Harris. Yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. They'll keep it on the ground. Harris again. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. On the draw, it's Harris. Shoves him aside. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. 47 yards rushing for him already. A terrific opening drive on the ground, and it's a first down. Harris running straight ahead. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. On second down, this is Harris. They'll be brought down at the 21 after a pickup of four. For the Colts, an extra defensive back in there now on third down. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. And they're knocking on the door now. There's a good run there. Going to take this to about the 10-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. A run with Harris out of the shotgun. And he's going to ball his way down to about the one-yard line. It'll be a pickup of eight and a good first step there with second and goal coming up. Harris, touchdown, Pittsburgh. Well, Charles, clearly they wanted to send a message there and, and impose their will. They score on their opening possession on a drive comprised entirely of rushing the football. Message sent. I don't know that the team on the other side of the field wanted to receive it, but what a statement on their opening drive. Just run it all the way downfield, no passes. That absolutely sets the tone that they're going to be physical in this game. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. The drive will start at the 25-yard line here as Rodgers will not return it. Ryan and the Colts getting set here first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Play action, Ryan. And that's caught left side by Mo Ali Cox. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Now Ryan. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. As a coaching staff, you can call just about whatever you want because you understand you have guys who reliably take away those massive shots downfield. You're not as worried about giving up the big one. Eluding the pressure right. Now that's into the hands of Mo Alley Cox, the tight end. Yeah, this is only going to be a gain of two. He needed three. It's fourth and one. So on fourth down, Matt Hawk on to punt for Indy. Back deep is Gunnar Olszewski. And he didn't quite have the back spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. They'll be looking to duplicate that first drive, the one that got them that 7 0 lead. Of course they would. I mean, look, they're on the road. So getting the 7 0 lead was huge for them, right? Imagine getting up two touchdowns on the road, taking the crowd out of the game. It'd be ideal. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. That swung out wide to Harris. And they'll bring it down at the 27 yard line. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. On third down, here's Harris. 
And some space here. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That one good for 14 yards and a steal at first. One thing's for sure, this defense has to figure out how to stop the ground game. He's eating him up here in the first quarter. It looks like they have to go to different forces, aren't they? The conventional things aren't working too well. So I remember a coach of mine saying way back when, when a back's having a great game, you've got to get the ball out of his hands. See how far he can run without the ball. And what he meant was takeaways, not get loose, because maybe you can't just stop him with just regular tackling. And it is still early, just the first quarter. But you start prorating the numbers, and we might be in for some history. I mean, that last run puts him over 100 yards already, and we've still got three quarters to go. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Now here's another carry for Harris. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. On the give, this is Harris. And he's got Rome. He'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. 131 yards rushing for him as he's got the afternoon off to a great start. Final 30 seconds of this first quarter, and it's been a quarter dominated by the guys with the football. And he'll power his way forward for about four yards there on the first down carry. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. They hand this off to Harris. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. After one, seven-nothing on the A Sports. Steeler football here to begin quarter number two. Play number nine set to come here on the drive on third and two. Pickett sets up play action. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he's got this inside the 10 to the 9 before he's out of bounds. Now, I know it's an emotional game, Charles. You can't do that. And when you get into your film sessions and you argue your case with your coaches, that's exactly what they say at the end. You just can't do it. It costs your team. And he gets halfway there from the 4 to the 2 on a gain of 2. Najee Harris, well built for work down here near the end zone. That's a nice job there to hold him up. But I doubt we've seen the last of him on this drive. Come on, let's go. From the two now, second and goal. Pickett going to keep it himself. And they will stop it after a fairly minimal pickup. The sneak good for two, but it's still going to set up a third down. Pickett going to keep it himself. And this time, he breaks the play, and he's in for the touchdown. The sneak successful from a yard out, and the Steelers have taken a two-touchdown lead now. Another impressive drive, so they're two for two. Two touchdowns, Charles, a great start to this ball game for them. And one of the words that's really worked its way into our lexicon is stacking. They've stacked momentum each time out, and not only on offense. Between those touchdowns, Defense held, forced to punt to get the ball back, and they played awfully well in this one. Both sides playing at optimum level. Point after, right down the middle, and that'll make the score 14 to zip. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Fielded right around the eight. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. And they're in a bind early here, down 14-0. Are you worried at this stage or still too early? You're worried. You're just trying not to transmit it to the rest of your team. You want to make sure that they stay positive. But at the same time, you're wondering, how are we going to move the football? What do we have on this play sheet that can work? Get back to basics is usually your answer. And make sure you find the guy who can move the ball fastest for you if you just get it in his hands. Yeah, still second quarter. You get points on the board here. I think you're feeling okay. And he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. And 
Pittsburgh with six defensive backs in the game here on third down. Now it's Ryan. He's going to float this one deep right side and unable to connect, incomplete. Now give him credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. Two drives won't tell the story of this game, but you absolutely have to like how this defense has played thus far. They have yet to allow this offense to get untracked in this one. On is the putter, Hawk, as he gets this one away. Olszewski now to return. 48-yard punt, seven on the return. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and ten. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. It has been about as perfect of a start to this game as these guys could have asked for, Charles. They've scored on their first two drives. They still haven't given anything up on the other side of the ball, so they can already make this a three-score game here if they can come away with points on this drive. Yeah, they're almost pushing to the break, aren't they, partner? Almost to the point now where it's a loss of words for me, which I know would excite all of our viewers, but you're just not supposed to see that type of dominance so quickly in a game like this. Everything they've done has been working so far. Offense, defense, you name it, it's going well for them. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. First and ten, here's Pickett. He's got his tight end, Fryermuth, over the middle. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that's going to bring up second down. They run the play fake. Here's Pickett. He gets it complete to Harris. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there, getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 34. That's caught by the 6'8 tight end, Zach Gentry. And they'll work this down inside the 30. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he could break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. They'll run. Here's Harris. Well, partner, they've been running it well the entire game, and the big guys up front, they're a huge reason why. And now they're reaping the benefits as they continue to put big holes and get a nice yardage. And he will have the first down across the 20 to the 19-yard line. 169 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here this first half. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? A lot of it's been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Oh, this one incomplete. The pressure got to him as he released it. And it's second down. Well, they certainly did a nice job improvising there, extending the play, hoping someone would come open downfield. But they never did. Got his man. It's caught for a Steelers touchdown. Kenny Pickett finding Pat Fryermuth. And the Steelers take a three touchdown lead. Well, with this rookie QB, we talk a lot about his ball placement and how good he can be at laying it right in there. I think we just saw, Charles, though, the strength of that arm. That was an absolute rifle for the completed touchdown. It absolutely was, and let's face it, you think he was really ready to get that first touchdown? Absolutely. He threw that pass with authority, just as you described. Big time arm right there, and let's face it, a lot of quarterbacks used to be pitchers in baseball. The fastball was usually their best pitch, and we saw it there. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And Rodgers will hold on to this one, and it'll come out to the 25. The Colts getting another possession here on offense. Well, CD, you kind of feel like they're in a bit of a danger zone right here because now you're down three scores, and I know we're in the first half, but 
the way this offense hasn't been able to generate anything, you feel like they probably need to get something going on this drive, right? Yeah, and sometimes I overuse that this is an important possession. But I think this has to be the possession where they come up with an answer because only a few teams in league history have ever come back from a four-score deficit. If they don't score here, that's what they could be facing the next time they get the ball. Back to Taylor on first down. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. There on the tackle, Minka Fitzpatrick. Those are the plays this defense needs with the deficit they're facing. It certainly is, and they've got to continue to swarm the football and hope that someone, while they're holding up the ball carrier, can get in there and rake it and lock it free. They need to get some takeaways as well. Now Ryan on second down. This will be taken in by Michael Pittman. And they're going to get this up to midfield. 158 left to play till we hit halftime. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. From midfield now, here's Ryan. They'll set up the screen to Taylor. And they're going to get this to about the 44-yard line. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. To throw again on second down, Ryan. And a throw for Pittman is intercepted. It's Devin Bush, the linebacker, who picks it. And the Steelers are going to get the football here at their own 30-yard line. Boy, we've seen a lot of mistakes here in this first half and another there on the interception. Yeah, they're certainly starting to pile up, aren't they? Because, let's face it, we expect a miscue here and there, but they're already down three scores and still giving the ball away. If they want to get back into this one, they've got to take care of the ball because right now the way they're playing doesn't say a whole lot for their chances. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at the 40. And they're unable to connect, but a late flag comes in. And the contact That's may have come too early. So a P.I. call going to cost him there defensively. What did you see? Well, I think it's the right call, partner, because sometimes we'll see officials kind of let them play. But by the letter of the law, that's... And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Dio Odangbo. He's the one that got home and takes him down for a loss of nine. After the sack on first down, Pickett. He's got his tight end, Fryermuth, right side. So from the 36 now, first and 10. No, he didn't spike it. He faked it. Open man here is Gentry. And he'll be marked down at about the 26-yard line. And the fake spike becoming a little bit more prevalent in today's game. It worked there. Those old days of brother-in-law in that play, you know, where you kind of know what they're doing. They're going to, you know, spike the ball. Touchdown! Zach Gentry in the final seconds of the first half. And the Steelers continue to pull away here in this first half. And that's a lead that excites a team as they head into the half. Good way to finish things off. Yeah, able to extend that lead, and you always say it, that can totally change the complexion of half number two. Yeah, it changes your morale, changes your outlook. But even before that, let's see if they decide to kind of squib kick or what they're going to do on the kickoff because you don't want to give up a big play right before the half ends. Good point. Extra point splits the uprights, and that makes the score 28 to nothing. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. The Colts come to the line, ready to start their next drive. They'll indeed start on the ground to run that clock. And he'll just push his way forward for a few as the clock will run. So we've reached halftime here with the visiting Steelers out in front. All right, so we skip the rest of halftime and get set for the third quarter. Final adjustments being made for the second half. Whether they'll amount to much in a game that's already pretty well decided, well, that's another question. Nevertheless, let's get you back out to Brandon and Charles. The drive will start at the 25-yard line here as Rodgers will not return it. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. 
But CD, they certainly know the hole that they face as they begin the second half. They have to do what precious few teams have done in NFL history. And that's try to come back from a four-possession deficit. And, partner, you know as that team gathers, they're saying to each other, you never say never, right? Because if you're on an NFL roster, that's how you have to think. You can always come back and win a ball game. And let's face it, we saw a certain Super Bowl, a 25-point lead late, that wasn't enough to put someone away. But that being said, this task is near impossible. Let's face it. And bottom line is, it officially becomes impossible if this possession is an empty one. On second down, it's Taylor. And he'll make it only to the 43, a gain of two. Well, this defense, they've got the four-score advantage, and you can see why they continue to bottle up the run game. And really, they've just been sharp in all facets here in this one, CD. Yeah, they've kept that offense in check the entire game. And I think it's been led by what you just talked about, that defensive front, which has not allowed them to run the football and establish control of the line of scrimmage. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and ten. Running straight ahead, Taylor. And boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. To throw is Ryan. This one completes Alec Pierce. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 26. Up the middle, here's Taylor. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down where they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. So not quite a first down just yet as they come up on second and less than a yard. Here's Ryan. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. I'm sure it was a tough halftime trying to figure out some strategy to get things going. Trailing by a lot when they went into the locker room. He's just trying every avenue to spark his team here to begin the third quarter. Not a lot going on on that play, though. And he is going to have a coach first down as they're able to convert on third and short yardage with a gain of four. On first down, Ryan. And it's caught. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. It's a 10-yard gain there to set him up first and goal. Taylor is going backwards as he'll be tackled back at the four-yard line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. A loss of two brings up second and goal. The Steelers Here's Taylor again. And this time he'll get down close to the goal line, but not quite in as he stopped at the one-yard line. Another shot to at least get on the board here. This is third and goal. They'll look to run with Taylor. And he is going to lose yardage here. Nothing doing there as the 13th play of the drive proves to be unlucky. Chase McLaughlin now for the field goal try. This a fairly straightforward 22-yard short attempt. And his kick here is good. And that drops a deficit from 28 to 25. Kind of surprised by that, that they kicked the field goal. I guess you get some points, but this deficit third quarter. Yeah, I don't either. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. When you're down that much, kicking a field goal, does it feel a little bit maybe waving the white flag? The light. I you just, just want to get that. out of here? Yeah, I, I think you got to go ahead and try and get some bigger points on the board. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Time for the Steelers' offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. And it's hard to imagine that the first half could have gone any better for them. So what's the approach here in the second half? Just continue to play smart football because they've got the other team down and they feel good about the position they're in. The obvious thing people would say is just keep attacking, but I think you also have to be smart about it. Avoid turnovers. That's about the only thing that can derail you at this point. Attack, but make sure you take care of the ball. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. I think the reason that this play is so successful is not just the blocking at the point of attack, but how about the speed at which he takes the handoff? He's in motion already. 
So he's not coming from a flat start like a running back often is. He's at a full run by the time he gets the football. Yeah, that is incomplete, but a penalty flag is down. That's this could possibly be a push-off. Looked like some hands both ways. They got it on the offense. Sometimes there's a fine line between being the receiver and the DB, and he knocked that one away. Might have caused an incompletion that could have been an interception. Pick it'll look to throw it here. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. To give you an idea of how accurate he's been throwing the football, we're in the second half. That's just his second incompletion. Well, if he's that locked in, that means everyone's locked in because to me it's like throwing a no-hitter in baseball. The pitcher may get the credit, a lot of people making plays behind him in the field. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. The Steelers send out their runner now. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And the Colts will go on offense here. First and 10. Ryan and the Colts getting set here. First and 10 at their own 17-yard line. Here's Ryan. And a throw for Pittman is intercepted. Picked off by Akella Witherspoon. And the Steelers are going to take possession of the football. But to be blunt, not a whole lot has gone right for this defense in this ball game. But that's something right there still in the third quarter. It would, it would take something around miracle territory for a comeback. But maybe that's a start, Charles. It certainly is. And they're definitely showing that there's some fight still left in them. Hasn't been a banner day. But they're trying their best to put that disappointment behind them and find ways to make plays. Pickett going to keep it himself. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. Yeah, partner, they went a little conservative, didn't they? And they ended up marking it short. And now I wonder, will they even do it again on third down? And he gets the first down yardage he needs before he's brought down at the six. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. Before they can get the punt away, whistles. As we come to the end of the third quarter. Back now in Indianapolis. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop him right around the one. Second and goal from the one. They go with Watt again, the fullback. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. Derek Watt punching it in from a yard away. And the Steelers start to open this lead even wider here in the fourth. Extra point safely through. And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to that big lead. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And Rodgers will hold on to this one, and it'll come out to the 25. And the Colts coming out now. Well, it's been a struggle so far for this offense, Charles. It's not only that they haven't been able to put the points up, but really stringing yards together has been a real issue for them in this one. I'm so glad you brought up the yardage because I was thinking to myself, we've seen a lot of NFL games, and we've seen our share of lopsided contests. But in almost all of them, both offenses have put up at least 200 yards in a game, but not in this one. This has been a display of offense, but frankly, I think the two of us have watched from behind our hands, trying to spread our fingers wide enough to actually see the result. On third down, Ryan. And he'll find Pittman. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And with this game well in hand, perhaps we are seeing the coverage lighten up a little bit as they got burned there a bit for a first down. Well, we certainly know the coach isn't happy along the sideline. 
because he certainly wants him to finish this one out the way they started it. He doesn't want to give up any soft completions, no late point. He wants his lead to stay right where it is. To throw on second and ten, Ryan. Campbell making the catch. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 42-yard line. On the draw is Taylor. And very little there. He might have gotten a yard. Yeah, I think he got a yard to the 41. Here's second and nine. Just a yard on that last run. Now Ryan. A quick throw knocked away. It's incomplete. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops from one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And they'll get him down at about the 37, well short of the first. Three yards, all they could muster there, and it'll bring up fourth down. They'll try and throw for it with Ryan. He'll take a shot downfield for Pittman. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. To throw again is Ryan. And he's left with no option here but to throw it away. They'll go again from the three here on second and goal. On the handoff, Taylor. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. Now it's Ryan. That one thrown away from the pocket. And the officials kind of looking at each other, but they'll say there was a receiver in the area, so no penalty, just an incomplete pass. Here we go. It's Ryan on fourth down. Got a man. It's Pittman, and he holds it in for the Colts touchdown. Four yards on the touchdown grab. And the Colts are finally into the end zone here in this fourth quarter. And now it's blocked. Now it's scooped up. It's down the numbers. There he goes. He's at the 40, the 20. And he takes it all the way back. And this crowd can't believe what they're seeing. Things go wrong even after a touchdown in this one. That is a play that you just do not see very often. Maybe a couple times a year, the blocked extra point return for two. You can't afford to give anyone a free run at the kicker. Oftentimes, it's going to bounce off his hands or chest and head the other direction. Following the botch, PAT, they're set to kick this one away. This will be fielded inside the five. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. Well, we've reached well, we've reached the stage where it's a it's a mere formality at this point. They've got the comfortable lead. We know what the outcome is going to be. I guess the only question is, do they want to put more points on the board before the final gun? Well, I certainly hope not. And I've been selfish here because you and I have played. Go ahead and finish this one off, guys. You've taken care of business. Let's close it out. And you and I, let's get to the airport. It's one play at a time, baby. Let's play. Let's play now, baby. Let's play. Pick it now to throw off the play fake. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Stephon Gilmore. Well, this is something we've seen before, partner. We've seen a defense bait a rookie, pretend to leave a window open, and then the defensive back jumped it as soon as the ball was released. Big time play. They love taking advantage of the youngsters, and in this case, it paid off well. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. Well, we said it at halftime that they would need a nearly perfect second half to erase that deficit that they were facing, CD, but unfortunately, 
the second half has pretty much been a carbon copy of the first. Yeah, that early lead was almost insurmountable the way their opponent was playing. And partner, they do have some good news, though. This one is getting close to being over, and they can try and hit the reset button starting tomorrow. Well, Brandon, we could see that play developing, and they were hoping that he was going to be able to put a move on the first guy and turn it into a big play. But no such luck. The speed on defense continues to get better and better in the NFL. Pretty nice example there. Those guys being able to run from their assignments and finish off that play. That'll give him 60 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. Now Ryan on first down. Hits his target to tight end Mo Alley Cox. And they're going to get this down inside the 15. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Throwing again, Ryan. And this is caught. Well, they get one back, picking up the late touchdown here, but still down big. McLaughlin for the extra point. The PAT up and good, but hold on a second. There is a flag. Personal foul. Welcome to the keeper. And that flag accepted. So it would no doubt be a miracle comeback from here, but let's see what they can do starting with the onside kick. And this doesn't work. The Steelers recover it. Now they're down big here in the fourth. They had to try the onside kick. Can't fault them for the effort at least. No, you can't at all. And if nothing else, now you've put something that you're trying to practice, right, that you, you've worked on into a game situation. And now you can go back and dissect it. So if you need it again sometime, maybe you'll find a better way to do it. But yeah, this game's pretty much done for them. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Now it looks like he'll throw here, escaping the pressure right. All right rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off by Stephon Gilmore. And the Colts are going to take possession of the football. Partner, have you ever heard the story of Icarus in mythology? That's the guy who flew too close to the sun and had his wings melted. That was our guy right there. He keeps pressing it and pressing it. Finally, on that throw, he paid the price with that turnover. And he'll be brought down at the 27. Ryan. He'll drop this down to Taylor. And he'll be marked down right at the 15-yard line. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop him with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. On first and 10, it's Ryan. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Ryan will throw again. And that is incomplete. That's coverage you'd expect to see in a tie game late. Not in a lopsided game like this. They are not letting up. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now it's Ryan. Got a man, it's Pittman, and he throws it in for the Colts touchdown. A great play there. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Colts have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. Extra point by the Colts, and it's up and good. And the lead will be cut down to 14. So time definitely not in their favor. Down two scores, but they'll try the onside kick. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a camper on this one. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. 
So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. He gets it complete to Harris. And he's going to be taken down at the 28-yard line. So now with six seconds remaining, we get a timeout on the field. First and ten, here's Pickett. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off by Stephon Gilmore. And the Colts come up with a late turnover. But it will probably only matter to the statisticians as this ball game is now officially over. A higher scoring game, Charles, than we typically see in the National Football League. But fun to